Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Winnow's Winners for round number three of the 2021 AFL Premiership season. I'm your host, Robert Winston, and I tell you what, wasn't it an exciting weekend of football and round number two? Myself, personally, I've been doing a little bit of traveling around Sweden, and I found myself in the capital in Stockholm, so I'm sure you would have noticed plenty of travel vlogs. Um, in the last few days, and there'll be plenty more videos dropping. But nonetheless, let's get into this video, and I hope you enjoy. I just want to touch on a few issues that I've noted down from round number two. And the AFL want to expand the game overseas. You know, they've pushed into markets like Europe, North America, and most notably recently, the China game. And I think New Zealand have we've played some games there where we kind of, does it work, doesn't it work? Well... Uh, I'll leave that up to the viewer, but one thing I wanted to touch on is the professionalism of AFL umpires. Now, FIFA do this really well, and the National Football League, the gridiron over in America, do this really well with professional umpires. The howler that cost, in my opinion, Brisbane Lions the game, I think Zach Bailey, that was just clear as daylight. I was watching that live, and that was incorrect disposal of the football, and Mark Blixkers has claimed that he you know, did dispose of the football correctly. The vision shows, you know, obviously he didn't. I think what happened was the umpire got stage fright. I think that, you know, it's a pretty hostile crowd. I've been to many games down at GM HBA Stadium. And I think, you know, that, you know, when it's an absolute howl like that, I remember even one with Shane Edwards back in the 2015 elimination final against the North Melbourne Kangaroos. And I thought, you know, there's howlers and, you know, these ones need to be fixed up. But if the AFL want to be truly a professional code, 100% professional code, they've got to make all their umpires professional. You know, full-time, professional, so we don't get these howlers. We've already got other technologies that help out scoring, reviews, etc. But I think that the AFL need to look at that. And I just think that the umpire, as hard as umpiring is, I'm being critical. I'm not an umpire, but I think the umpire did get stage fight. So I just wanted to touch on that. I thought the Dogs win in a seesawing contest against the Eagles was one of the better wins of the, I suppose, games that were seen so far, all 18 games that were seen so far. I thought Liberatore was instrumental in his 150th game. And how classy is Bontem Pelly? And smart too for the fact that he ran down that clock beautifully, took his full 30 seconds, and then was able to nail the goal and secure victory. For the Bulldogs, Fremantle's game, they completely dismantled GWS's midfield. And I'll tell you what, how good was David Mundy, who's sort of haunted me over the years with a couple of after sign goals against the Tigers, 35 disposals, Brayshaw 32, Caleb Sarong had 28. And it was sad to see that Nat Fife was concussed by Sam Reid. It'll be interesting to see what happens at the tribunal. But I think this is something the AFL has got right as opposed to what I think is wrong with the umpire umpiring in the AFL and the professionalism. The 12-day concussion rule, I think, is an absolute must. I think it's the smartest thing in football that the AFL has done, and especially after seeing the 60 Minutes report with the family member of Shane Tuck and what had happened to his brain and you know, all the research that has gone into it. You know, CT is a real thing, and I think 12 Day concussion rule is the smartest thing for the, the future of footballers' is health and also, you know, to cover the AFL as a, as a league, as a competition, and we want to be leaders in that realm. Uh, the last one to conclude round, so I thought CJ, the don't argue against the best don't arguer in the league of Dustin Mark was really good to see, and it's good to see a young player, CJ, just take on the game, playing that halfback role, and I thought, that he was really instrumental in Hawthorne being competitive on the day. However, the Dusty show and the Tigers had the last laugh. Let's get into round number three. So we'll kick it off Thursday Night Football. This game has been re relocated from the Gabba to Marvel Stadium due to COVID-19 concerns and a cluster spreading throughout the Brisbane city. It's Collingwood v. the Brisbane Lions. I thought both sides were very good last week. Collingwood against the Blues, and we'll get into Carlton later. They were really bad, let's be honest. And I thought Brisbane, as I just mentioned, Zach Bailey probably should have won the game with if the free kick had been paid for holding the ball. They went down by one point. I think Brisbane Lions are due for a win. 
And I think their forwards might explode. You know, and Eric Hitwood, he kicked four goals last week. Joe Dan Danaher's bound to fire at some stage. And then you look at their midfield, you know, the Zorcos, Lockie Neals. You know, they're going to be really strong, the Brisbane Lions. I'm going to be tipping. I'm still holding um, firm on what I said about Collingwood a couple of weeks ago. I think, you know, maybe I've overrated the, the Carlton Blues. And I think they're still going to struggle with Collingwood. I don't think they'll make the eight. So Brisbane, to kick off their season with a... 30-point victory at Marvel Stadium on Thursday night football. We're going to Friday night football. North Melbourne v. the Western Bulldogs. We all know that North Melbourne struggled against the Gold Coast Suns last week. And I think it's going to be a big doggies victory. Even in my AFL season prediction video, I did say that they would cop a lot of beltings. And this will be nonetheless. It's going to be the Dogs by 70 points with all the reasons that I've mentioned in the last couple of weeks about the Dogs. Strong midfield. Good forward line. And I'll tell you what, with their backs, uh, led by Roughhead, they're going to be a real dominant and forceful side in 2021. And a Saturday afternoon football. It's the Adelaide Crows v. the Gold Coast Suns. I think this is going to be a flip of the coin game. This is going to be played in, in South Australia, so at the Adelaide Oval. And most people would say, you know, well, the Adelaide Crows were pretty competitive um, and Gold Coast Suns had a win. But I think at home, I think Tex Walker is in really good form. He has six tackles inside the forward 50. And that's what this standing on the mark rule is doing. It's actually opening up the game. And for a bigger body, slower forward like Tex Walker, he can actually use his smarts, break the lines and get on those sort of, you know, those short 10 to 15 meter leads. And once he's out, and if the ball's delivered you know, by the midfield really well, um, you know, he's going to kick a lot of goals this yeah, Tex Walker. So I reckon it's going to be the Adelaide Crows by 15 points in what some would say is going to be an upset against the Gold Coast Suns. And we'll go to Saturday afternoon football, Richmond and the Sydney Swans from the MCG. This is a twilight game kicking off at 4.45. Richmond with a strong win against the Hawks. Sydney with a great win against the Adelaide Crows. And I'll tell you what, I'm really excited to see Buddy Franklin Bardwana back at the MCG. He's chasing his thousand goal tally. And, you know, it was a long couple of years after the Bardwana, but I hope he does do well, along with Dustin Martin. He's probably already got the six Brownlow votes, and it's going to be epic to see such champions of the game line up head-to-head. -head. But I think it's going to be the Tigers who are going to be too strong at the MCG, and they'll defeat the City Swans by 37 points. Essendon v. the Saints. Essendon, they're really disappointed so far this year. They're going to lose a lot of games. And I've mentioned this in previous videos. They're just simply not up to the standard at the moment. And, you know, you've got to actually feel sorry for the coach because there's been so much uh, movement and, I suppose, you know, um, no calm and real clear direction at the Essendon Bombers for a long period of time now. I won't go too in-depth to it, but it'll be the Saints. I love their list. I love their midfield. I love their forward line. They just signed up a memory for a further three years. I thought Jack Higgins is working well in that forward line. And Dan Butler will probably be the steal of the 2020, um, sorry, should I say 2019 draft in the sense uh, trade period. Um, but, you know, um, they've got a lot of great players, the Saints. And it's going to be the Saints by 45 points in a great victory over the Essendon Bombers. Okay, let's go to Saturday Night Football over at Optus Stadium. I think this is probably the game of the round. The West Coast Eagles beat Port Adelaide. West Coast Eagles are lucky to go down against the Bulldogs um, by eight points on the weekend. They played really well. Port Adelaide, well, they just keep on keeping on, sitting on top of the ladder. I think this contest will come down to the midfield. I really love uh, the games of Ollie Wines, Travis Boak, and the like. I thought, um, you know, Alira Alira in that back line, he is playing some serious football. So, you know, he's going to line up on a Josh Kennedy. Um, and I think it's going to come down to number one, the midfield, but number two, who, what, what back line will outperform against their forwards? And I think uh, the side who does those two facets of the game better than the other side will win this game. But nonetheless, despite the fact that it's getting played at Optus Stadium, I like what I see from the mighty Port Adelaide power. It's going to be the power by 19 points on Saturday night football. Okay, we'll go to the Sunday fixtures and another game at Marvel Stadium. It's Carlton v Fremantle. Fremantle with a big win last week against the disappointing GWS Giants. And I'll tell you what, I, I don't know if Carlton just simply didn't rock up for the occasion, but I was actually on the train 
from Malamore to Stockholm here in Sweden. And the Blue Boys just simply didn't rock up. It was game, set, and match at quarter time. And despite, you know, flows and ebbs within the game, they kind of got within 10 points, 15 points, within that sort of three-goal buffer. But, you know, the damage had already been done. And also with injuries to Martin and Fisher, which have been confirmed, along with Cripps, which is a question mark. But with the game being played on Sunday, I would expect he will get up. You know, I don't really know what the Blues are going to bring in and, and their depth and, you know, where they're at as a footy club psychologically, you know. They they build themselves up all pre-season. And, uh, you know, despite a good showing against the Tigers, Richmond were just, you know, they got the job done uh, in the end. And I like, um, as I mentioned previously, earlier in the video, the games of Bundy, Brayshaw, Sarong, and they got a lot to work with uh, the Fremantle Dockers. I think the Dockers are going to come down to Melbourne and upset the Blues, and it's going to be Fremantle by... Seven points in the upset of the rounds. So let's go to UNSW Canberra Oval. The GWS Giants beat Melbourne Demons. The Giants, a lot of question marks being posed on some of their senior key figures at the footy club. And Leon Cameron would have been absolutely tearing the walls down at the Giants Stadium. What a, I suppose, uh, disappointing effort it was um, over in the West. And they would have got home and he would have been seething Leon Cameron. And Melbourne Demons... They played really, really well. And a lot of those players who were uh, recruited early in the draft are starting to come into that sort of, you know, good age bracket of between 24 to 29 years of age. And they're building a really formidable list. Um, I still don't trust Melbourne. And I think that the GWS Giants will react after a slow start to the year. They're still got a fair bit of talent on the park. They've got a lot of support in Canberra. And I don't think Melbourne, to, to what I've seen in the last two years since they made that pre-limary final, have got, um, I suppose, enough confidence. But this will be a bit of a hoodoo shake if they can win Melbourne. But I think it's going to be the GWS Giants who take this one in a close encounter by 10 points. And we'll go to the Easter Monday traditional fixture from the MCG. Geelong Cats v Hawthorne. The Cats, it's simple as this. They've got a better list than the Hawks. The Hawks will try hard. But, you know, like, I look at uh, a player who won the Brownlow a few years ago, uh, Tom Mitchell. He's not having as much influence that he had in that Brenlow winning year of 2018 and does rack up really dominant as far as um, a ball carrier. And I think um, meters gained is a big stat in the AFL these days. Um, and we know that Geelong, you know, well, where do we start? They've got so much talent across the park. But, uh, you know, be, be expected the Geelong Cats will get up in this one by 20 points. Winners, winners for round number three. If you do enjoy that video, along with all my other videos that have been releasing. I've been traveling around Europe, doing travel vlogs, and there's plenty of content dropping. I'm trying to build this channel from the ground up. I want to become a media professional. I'm currently studying a Bachelor of Sports Media at Holmes Glen, and I'm halfway there as far, far as the degree goes, and I really want to shake things up and not necessarily do one of one exact specific topic, but there's going to be a bit of Tiger Talk. There'll be winners, winners. There'll be travel vlogs. And if you do enjoy my content, please give me a subscribe. That's how I'm going to build up the channel. And if you're interested in any of my other media endeavors, I've got a show on your local station, 88.6, Plenty Valley FM, called Licorice All Sports. So, like, I'm trying to produce content, mainly local sport, but if I can get a big name, which I have in the past, such as Sam Newman and the like, um, you know, please make sure you tune in between 9 and 10. AM 88.6 Plenty Valley FM or pvfm.org.au. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Please make sure you follow me on my adventures over here in Sweden and Europe abroad. Take care and I'll see you soon.